Uh, so more Mets ownership news that uh, is probably not going to make a lot of Mets fans happy because you've got now adding to the J-Lo and A-Rod group a bunch of other named athletes, like celebrity athletes that are going to be joining this group. Now, it's sort of fun to a degree because you've got these big-name people that are involved and it makes the Mets feel glitzy and glamoury and all those things that that they, they have lacked, I suppose, over the last number of years. But now it's gotten to the point where it's just, to me, for me, it's too much. Because now it feels like the Miami Dolphins when everybody who ever lived in Miami who was a celebrity owned a piece of that team. And I don't think that they're going to end up winning this bid. But when I hear that Jeff Wilpon would prefer that the Mets get sold to J-Lo and A-Rod, then I start to get worried because now it's also Travis Kelsey, Bradley Beal, Joe Thomas. There's other people in there, too. I can't even remember half of them. Brian Urlacher. That's right. Bri- so Brian Urlacher is one of the nicest guys in the world, one of the greatest linebackers I've ever seen when I was growing up watching football. I couldn't stand the guy because he was so damn good against the Minnesota Vikings. He did Every game he played against the Vikings, 15 tackles, two sacks, a pick, and a fumble recovery. But this guy's now going to own a piece of the Mets. I want it to be Steve Cohen. The Wilpons don't want it to be Steve Cohen. And now you got this giant... You were talking about celebrity family feud yesterday. That's sort of what this group is like. It's like a celebrity family feud that's trying to buy the New York Mets. I hope it doesn't happen for them. To me, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, if A-Rod and J-Lo are the owners of the team or they're the face of the team, it's fine. As I said to Al before, and he's, he's on your side. He believes the same thing. He thinks it's goofy. There are people with money. That's all it is. If their names were Bill Williams, John Smith, you know, Jason Jackson, and they were just billionaire people or just guys that had $100 million, we wouldn't care. A lot of these groups are multiple uh, layers of different rich investors. So it doesn't, the fact that they're going to people they probably know that have deep pockets, it's fine. I don't expect DeMarco Murray to have, you know, a sweet making calls at the trade deadline. Um, I understand your point, but at the end of the day, the Miami Dolphins are run by Stephen Ross, and yes, there are a lot of celebrity investors, but they, there's no. So who's there's running no the Mets out of all these? That. Who's running the Mets out of all would, these people? I would think A Rod is. I would. I would think A Rod is the the baseball man that's going to be front and center of this team. That's okay, what I would, that would, that's what I would expect. But he will have nowhere near the most amount of money invested in the team. And I don't. Two, I don't know how much they're putting in. I mean, you've got other people that are going to be. You know, maybe the uh, the larger investors of the team, but I think part of like like what does Derek Jeter have in, invested in the Marlins? Well, no, not a lot. I mean, he's right. basically he, he's running it, but it exactly. seems like it, it does seem like you you can't though. I think be a rod expect to run this team and then have two people who are investing in Rapoli and Vincent Viola. A lot more than you. Now, I know whatever happened in Miami, I really don't know the, the power structure, but they're, they've are they been a disaster there. Uh, and I know that they're trying to rebuild, but it's been a flat-out disaster business and on the field, and, and Derek Cheater has admitted as much. Uh, yeah. He says, yeah, you know, like, no fans. It's been great, you know, and we lose ball games. Tremendous. It's been awesome down here. He said that facetiously uh, in an interview not that long ago. So to me, it's like that, that type of structure – and in, in even if we didn't know the names of the players that were involved, that type of structure always scares me because you have to have so many people who always get what they want on the same page. And that, to me, can lead to a lot of indecision and wrong decisions and infighting and stuff that you just don't want. And that's one thing you could say about the Wilpons for the last number of years after they had you know, Doubleday was bought out is that they at least agreed on everything. You never had we to think. worry about that. We think. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, him and his dad and Saul Katz, it seemed like they you never heard about how one guy wanted one thing, another guy wanted another. That never really came out. But when you've got the potential of 15 different people, especially that are celebrities that people want to see, I mean, people are going to root against this now. And that's not what I want to see. You know, people are going to love the fact that A-Rod and Travis Kelsey got into an argument over this or J-Lo but see, can't I, stand Vincent Viola. I don't now, think that's it's just the, a mess. But I don't think that's going to be the case. I really don't. I think, you know, it depends on the team philosophy. The, the whole situation in Miami is different because they've got zero fan base. 
mm-hmm. and they've got no money to spend on free agents. And so when Derek Jeter goes in there to take over, he sees one path. Now, they had good players, and they could have been a good team, but they didn't have the finances to pay them. And so he decided to tear it down and start ground up which is a really, really tough task and undertaking. Now, I don't think we'll be able to judge what Jeter has done in Miami really for another three years, to be honest, maybe two, but I I think it takes time what he's trying to do. And I do believe there are baseball experts that have looked at what that farm system has become and believe that they will be really good in the future. Now, what they do with that success and talent is another issue, and it comes down to finances. When you're in New York here, It's not going to be a strip down and rebuild. It's going to be a team of investors that are going to have to come in and spend money. I do believe that. I think A-Rod knows that. I think he's been here. He's played for the the Yankees. He understands the market, I would like to think. And Rapoli, who I don't know a lot about, but I've heard and read about him a little bit over the last couple of weeks, I would think would be in line too. I do not think, I really don't believe, that if the Mets are on the verge of trying to sign a big-ticket free agent, that Rapoli's going to get A-Rod and DeMarco Murray on a conference call and say, all right, guys, what do you think? I think you've got a GM to make the decisions to bring that to ownership, and not everybody, but the people that have the most stake and have the most at stake to make those decisions, and that's where you go from there. I think the other people are just they're just names in a mix. I don't think it matters at all that Travis Kelsey might have a 0.2% share in the Mets. Well, I really don't. That, that might not matter, but... A Rod, J Lo, Rapoli, and Viola. Those four sure. guys. That I mean, that's four people right there. But I think, and but I, but I don't think that's. If I look down the ownership structure of most teams, I don't know that that's different anywhere else. I think a, a lot of places you might have a fifty percent owner, and then you got a whole like look at the Redskins for instance. I was surprised by that franchise's ownership structure. When I saw that Daniel Schneider owned 55% of the Redskins, I forget what the number was. He's got the majority share. But you've got like 45% of a team owned by other people, and you don't even know it. Well, that's that's exactly the point, though. It's that when people have some celebrity to them or they've owned other teams, uh, their opinion wants to be heard. They want yeah. their opinion heard more. Now, Not when it's such a small stake, though. I really, well, I, To me, okay. it's inconsequential. All right, so then if you, if you want to say that all those names that we heard yesterday you can toss out, I'll still give you the fact that you got four heavy hitters as opposed to one sure. in the guy that I believe most Mets fans want. And I'll be honest, if it was... This group or the Wilpons, meaning the A-Rod group or the Wilpons, I would take the A-Rod group. But the reason why I am so incredibly against the A-Rod group is because I know the Wilpons are selling the team. That's not even a question anymore. Right. It's gone. It's out of their hands. And you've got a guy that teased us the first time around, and I thought that we were going to get a new owner. It didn't happen. Now he's back, and he's salivating. He wants this thing. He's the exact type of owner that I want to own my team, one who is not going to have any red lights in front of him and is passionate about the Mets and passionate about New York as opposed to what's being put together with A-Rod and J-Lo. That's really the reason why I'm against it more than anything else. Well, and I, and I understand that. And at the end of the day, I do believe it's going to come down to money, and he's got the deepest pockets, and I think he's going to give you the biggest offer, and I do believe he will end up being the next Met owner. That said, I applaud the A-Rod group for trying to find people with more money to up their offer, to do what they can, because I don't know that they can right now compete with what Steve Cohen has to offer for his um, purchase options, if you will. So, you know what? Do what you can. The the bids were in. My guess would be they put their bid in and then found out, as we all did, like what? He was offering $2 billion for the team and mm-hmm. $2 billion for SNY. And I don't know if that's right. true or not, but that's what was reported. They might have said, my God, if that's what he's offering, we better go find some more people and more cash because we can't compete with that. I don't know if the... The, the Harris group can compete with that. I don't know if anybody can compete with basically a $4 billion transaction. Ultimately, I believe it will come down to whoever offers the most money, and I think it will be him, and I think that's probably the deal that they accept. We, yeah, unfortunately, it, it takes time to just work through all the details of this stuff. Right, right. And it does seem like, at least reportedly, that Jeff Wilpon, for whatever reason, I guess the way that the initial negotiation went with Steve Cohen, he's still holding a grudge. So... He probably would prefer. Now, he's not going to make the ultimate call. I mean, there's two other people there, and, and Fred and, and Saul Katz, who Saul Katz is I, – I always love the Saul Katz shout-out at the press conferences. <laughs> uh, when anybody gets hired or whatever it is, it's always the Fred, Jeff, and Saul Katz. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, but, yeah, so I, I think that Jeff 
is loving the fact that A-Rod is trying this hard because then there seems like there's a legitimate option to Steve Cohen. But I also don't like the fact that it's like, I mean, I know we're talking about billions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars, but it just seems to me like, you know, someone is outside of the 7-Eleven, doesn't have enough money for the 12th pack. (laughs) They're asking asking their (laughs) friends and everybody that walks by for a couple bucks, you know? It's like, come on. Yeah, there's a goofiness to it. You're either in or you're out with this. You got enough cash or you don't. You don't call up all your rich friends and say, hey, let's start a GoFundMe page for the Mets. (laughs) I mean, Steve Cohen's laughing at this stuff. He's like, you guys, give me a break. I mean, I could give you I could give the Mets four billion for the TV network and the team, and I'd still have hundreds of billions left to just throw around in your face. Which begs, that's the guy. Which begs the next question. How much are they possibly putting in? Like, you know, looking at career earnings like Al and I were doing, warm up show between five and six. No. Brian Erlacher made eighty million dollars playing football. And I hate to bring this up because Boomer's not here, but after taxes, it's probably forty million dollars. <laughs> now I know he's making money for the the seeds in his head. I get that and he endorses products. But there's no way he's making another $100 million off the field at this, I would not think, at this stage of his post-playing career. How much is he possibly putting in? $5 million? And if you think about it, what percentages are we talking about of a $2 billion, $3, $4 billion transaction? Minuscule. So I think it's, you know, it's glitzy and all that. But at the end of the day, I think it means absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Well, what it one thing it does mean is that they had to string together some more cash because sure. they they see the real rich guy looming. Yeah. I mean, there's rich guys and then there's really rich guys. I mean, obviously, you know, Rapoli and and um, Vincent Viola are are wealthy, wealthy men. But I mean, Steve Cohen's doing this on his own. Well, he's, what was he worth? Eleven billion? Is that what I read? Eleven billion dollars? I think. Uh, I mean, and just think about that number. Just Google it. He can offer $4 billion right now and still have 60% of his net worth sitting there. Like, wow. I mean, that is, man. 13.6. 13.6, okay. uh, According to Forbes on December 5th, 2019. Could you imagine spending $4 billion and having 10 still sitting there? Or you'd be Jeff Bezos and spend $4 billion and have $196 billion still sitting there. Or yeah, more than billion. that, maybe. Yeah, one billion is a lot, you know. So, well, see, and Rapoli's worth about one billion. He has made the Billionaires Club, which is yeah. something to sneeze at. But you yeah, know, pales thir- in comparison, though. Thirteen times that is just a different world. It's a different stratosphere. Like the, he makes Steve Cohen makes, and this is not a shot. This is just reality. He makes Alex Rodriguez and Jennifer Lopez, who are wealthier beyond anyone's means, he makes them look like paupers. Yeah. He does. I mean, think about what I read. They're worth together seven hundred million dollars compared to ten billion. I'm sorry, thirteen point six billion. It's nothing. It's literally nothing. I think they have a joint checking account. No, J-Lo. I, no <laughs> chance. Where they where that seven hundred and fifty million is just sitting in. I think regular people <laughs> that get married don't have joint checking accounts anymore. I don't think they do. No way. Mm-mm. Oh man, yeah, I saw that. A combined net worth is seven hundred and fifty million dollars. Think about the world we're living in that we can now. Look at a joint, uh, or rather a combined uh, net worth of seven hundred and fifty million dollars, and huh, scoff at it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right I mean, during during all of this now right. too, which makes it even more sort of stomach turning that this yeah. stuff goes on. It's hard for people to uh, even understand. 